build a relationship with an essay and then you tell them what you want and they prioritize your wish or your wish list based on how good of a customer you are, to be honest. You know, it's not fair. A lot of people hate it. A lot of people think it's messy, tacky, shady, just absolutely abhorrent. But you know what? Sometimes you win. Welcome to another episode of Tiwa Did That. I'm Tiwa, and when I do it, it get done. Two sticks in my bun. And like I say every single time, you guys, um, I try to shoot here when I can, but day-to-day -day stunts, serves, unboxings are typically gonna be on my Instagram because shooting a YouTube video is a lot of work. <laughs> No, but really, anything that's not unboxed on this channel is definitely gonna be unboxed on my Instagram, specifically my story. Um, check those out. I put a lot of time into those, which is almost depressing. But um, yeah, I have fun. I like to have fun. But today is a super special unboxing because I have waited over a year for this bag, okay? Over a year. It's October. I requested this bag in September last year. This is of course with a long wait. You can always expect the item to be Hermes. And so this bag I've been waiting for for over a year and it's finally here and I cannot wait to unbox it. So let's start with the backstory on this item. Nice. Let's start with that. Here it is, but let's put it right here and just chat. Let's just chat for a while. So at Hermes, um, there's a high demand for the bags and a low supply, and that's part of what makes them so special. But anyway, how they decide who gets these bags is entirely based on customer priority and loyalty. Sometimes they just give it to somebody because they're feeling the fantasy. So like I said, to get a Birkin or a Kelly from Hermes, you typically have to have a great purchase history, a good relationship with your essay, and you know, the balls <laughs> to ask for one of these bags. And so last October, or actually uh, late September, I, you know, I came to my essay, you know, I said, I'm coming to you as a woman, you know, I'm coming to you as a customer in need. And I want you to hear me out when I say that I want blank. And he was like, we'll see. <laughs> for normal people like me, uh, you can actually sometimes, okay, place something called a podium order. So a podium order is um, an order that goes to an event called the podium. And that event is where all the store managers go to Paris and decide on the inventory that is going to be brought to their store for the following two quarters of the year, right? So a podium order is when your essay manages to get the manager of the store to consider and submit a request of a particular product that you would like to buy and have it requested specifically in Paris and sent to the store already sold to you, if that makes sense. This is why a lot of the time when you hear, oh, no Birkins, no Kellys, sorry, we don't have any Birkins, any Kellys, it's because a lot of these bags are already spoken for. A lot of these bags are podium orders for people who've been waiting for months and months and their SA finally put in the request and said, hey, um, Jimmy really wants an HAC 40 Togo Black. Could we put that in the podium to come in next year? And then when that bag arrives, if Jenny comes into the store and says, oh, do you have a black HAC Togo? They're gonna be like, no, we don't because it's for Jimmy. Do you know what I mean? So they have the bag, but it's not for you. This, to conclude and open this box, this is a podium order, okay, for me from my store. And I am absolutely gagged and shook that it's right here in front of me. I, so here we go, guys. I'm so nervous, oh God. Okay.
Okay, so typically on these ribbons, you can see the year. So this is a 2021 bag. It was requested in the 2020 October podium or no, it was in the February podium, right? That was when my request for this bag was submitted to Paris and I got it in October. So that lets you know a little bit about how the Hermes weight can go. So I hope you guys have been guessing in the bio this whole time in the bio. In the comments, I hope you guys are guessing in the comments, Birkin or Kelly, what do you think? The Hermes veterans who know the sizes of these bags might be able to tell whether it's a Birkin or a Kelly, but I don't know. Oh, right, tissue. <laughs> okay, oh. oh my God. You wanna know something crazy? I'll tell you the specs about this bag in a minute, but when I was researching this leather and I knew that I wanted it and I made my request, it was because, <laughs> It was because I had read that the smell of this particular very rare leather is so delicious. It actually catches you off guard. And look at me, I'm off guard. Oh my, girl. Yes, it's crazy because this brand makes you do these crazy things to get these bags. But once you get the bag, you're like, it was worth it. I would do it again, 100%, I don't care. Okay guys, so here's what, and let's just, shut up. Okay, I, I gotta get it together. I'm shooting a video right now. My hands are shaking, but this is my Kelly 25 in Barania for board leather, which is the incredible smell that you can smell, that I can smell. And this is just the felt covering. I will spare you guys from taking that off in a moment. I honestly, we're gonna bring out the arms or the sangle. So guys, um, as you just saw, <clears throat> in an unfortunate twist of fate, um, this video got ruined by a sound quality issue. Um, not gonna dwell on that. This happened months ago when I was trying to edit this video. I was really pissed off and I just tabled the whole thing. But then the other day I was thinking, okay, I've had this bag for eight months. This is the perfect opportunity to review this bag and use that footage as the second half of the unboxing video instead of just throwing away the whole unboxing video. So here we are. I'm actually not mad that the sound got messed up on the first shooting of this video because honestly, I was too gagged and shook to say anything useful. I didn't know if I was even speaking English in that video. I was absolutely gagged. I mean, this was a true and honest reaction to seeing this bag for the first time, a bag that I'd waited so long for. So, you know, excuse me, I I was just doing what I had to do. But I think now um, we can really get into this and um, really discuss what's going on in here. So let's uh, crack this open again. As you can see, I took the trouble to wear the same tank top that I was wearing in the old video, just for a little bit of symmetry, you know? I can't give y'all everything. Maybe the seasonal changes are affecting the lighting in this room. I don't know, girl, you tell me. Um, here's the box, and just to show you, it has been many months. Look at the tissue paper now on this box. If you can get the focus. See, it's crinkled because I literally use this bag, and I have been using this bag now for months. So, let's get in. So guys, in this bag is my Kelly 25 pochette in the Depeche style, so with the tail, um, in Barania Faubourg leather, white contrast stitching, palladium hardware, cellier style, because of the stitching and how the seams are on the outside. And um, this bag still has this incredible smell. Oh God. Barania Faubourg has this amazing saddlery smell and it never goes away. It's been months, it's been months. I know if you remember 10 minutes ago, um, I opened this bag for the first time and it had this incredible smell. 
and it still has it. Iconic. Very, very iconic. So like I said, you guys, I'm really enjoying this bag so far. It's only been eight months, but I wanna show you guys how incredible, how incredible the quality of this bag is, the condition of this bag. Obviously, I'm an excellent parent, but goodness gracious, I've taken all the plastic off because I'm literally not a baby. And when I use my bags, I use my bags. But look at the condition of this bag. No scratches, no drama, no scuffs. It is literally in perfect condition. I am such a good mother. Okay guys, so first part of this review, I wanna start with the proportions of the bag. Now, traditionally, this is a clutch by function, and that means you're gonna be very hands-on, touching it, grabbing it. My traditional methods for holding it are either like this, avoiding the hardware, or like this, still avoiding the hardware. I'll talk more about the leather later, but this is a very forgiving leather to be on a clutch, which is actually why I think I made such a great choice with the leather. This leather responds very well to the natural oils in the hand. I don't really have a lot of staining or discoloration from using it with a slightly moisturized hand, even though please, please beware of lotions and perfumes on expensive bags. It's a risky road to travel. Don't cry to me when the chickens come home to roost. But yeah, the proportions are great. It's, as far as a clutch goes, pretty big. Um, you can see it's not the smallest bag. I have pretty large hands, but why don't we use my cell phone as an example? This is a 12 Pro, and it is pretty um, much gonna fit in there with ease. It's a really big clutch, but really, really thin. And so you have a very easily held bag with a substantial amount of leather, really a showstopper. But despite its front-facing size, I really don't feel like it's terribly clunky. I think um, the clean lines with the cellier stitching make it a very, very sleek bag, despite its larger appearance on the hand in carrying. You know, it's making a statement, but not looking sloppy. It's all snatched around here. Okay. Now I want to talk a little bit about the leather. Okay, so this leather, as I mentioned earlier, is called Varenia Faubourg. It's actually a newer heritage leather from Hermes. And the original Faubourg, no, the original Varenia leather is actually a smooth grain leather. But this leather, as you can see, has very shallow graining. You can see it more on this right side. The pebbling on that leather is natural, but Varenia, by definition, is treated with like, I don't know, a million um, different tanning oils to create this beautifully rich color. I mean, it just dances with the light. It's fabulous the way that the leather really absorbs color and gives it so much dimension. It's really quite nice. And that is what makes it a heritage leather. These leathers are some of the oldest materials that Hermes has been working with for hundreds of years at this point, and it makes them very resilient, not easily dried out, not easily stained, and if you believe it, not easily damaged by water. I kid you not, this bag, despite my best intentions, has come into contact with water before, and I freaked out, but my essay told me, don't do anything. Don't dab it, don't wipe it, don't scream, don't yell it will be fine. And I'm telling you, I had a patch of water this big on the top flap and it completely dried good as new. I could not believe it. I thought somebody drew a pentagram around this thing while I was sleeping because the next day it was completely fine. And so it's a really, really tough bag, but that's what you get with a heritage leather. You know, you get a bag that is going to last forever, but more than that, a bag that can be easily refurbished back to mint condition. And even to get this bag to not be in mint condition, you have to throw it down a hill into the flames of an active volcano. And even then it's like 50-50 on damage. So now that we've covered leather, let's dip into color. This bag in the Berenia Faubourg only comes in two colors, okay? So we have fauve, which is this super rich brown. 
that this bag is in right now. You know there's a color from Hermes called gold that is a lighter brown, a little more even, and I don't wanna say basic, but um, I already said it. This is a much more dynamic brown in my opinion, and the contrast stitching just gives it so much definition. It's really, really glamorous. I absolutely love this color. It responds well to touch, and it gets, you know, a little character as you use it, but not too much character. I don't want a bag with too much character. This is not Mary Poppins. I really like the fact that the bag changes, but still keeps the integrity of the initial um, coloring. It's very, very even, but still dynamic. Do you feel me? Do you get it? Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is capacity. This bag is bigger than it looks, and that's pretty big already. Um, as I said, I like to carry it like this or underhand, but typically things can dip quite far down into the body of the bag. And so I have a really interesting strategy for making sure that I can still reach easily into it and get the things that I need. And I don't have things sifting all the way to the bottom and stretching the bag as I go in. That said, the leather is super, super, super durable, resilient, thick, and you don't really have a lot of um, shape loss because of the stitching style. The Cellier stitching style sort of keeps the bag in shape regardless of what's in it and doesn't let you stretch it that much, which is actually a good thing because despite your best intentions, you know, the wrong placement of an object in a softer bag could really spell disaster. So the first thing I do is take the dust bag that it comes with, okay, and fold it into a tube. Now you're probably wondering, what the fuck is going on here? Are we having an origami class? Like, I didn't bring my pencil case. Let me move you guys a little closer. You have to push the sangle just a little bit, grab and lift, and it comes off easy as pie. Push the sangle in, grab and lift, comes right off. And you know, when you get these bags in a heritage skin, the sangles don't feel flimsy. I mean, these are like bullets. The way they fly in and fly out is amazing. And so then you push in the main breastplate and lift the flap and boom, you're in the bag. And just to show you guys, um, the inside has a beautiful blind stamp here, embossed, not printed, which is how you know it's a heritage skin and not a traditional calf skin. Um, but let's move on to what I was doing, what I was saying in the first place, which is what I do with this dust bag. I take my dust bag and the bag and then put it right there in the bottom, okay? So now what have I done? I've given the base of the bag some structure as well as lifted any contents that I want to add to the bag, right? So now that my bag is stuffed with its own dust bag, which is great for rain, by the way. The whole idea of putting that in there besides lifting the contents is to make sure that in case I'm caught in a really bad rainstorm, I can empty the bag out, take out the dust bag, wrap it up, and save my beautiful bag, which, as I mentioned, still does quite well with rain, but I just wanna avoid it where I can, okay? So, here I have my handy dandy, trusty Hermes toi pouch, which I keep my clutch essentials in. My smaller bags, I typically only have a wallet and a few cosmetics, and that's what I keep in here to easily transfer into smaller clutch style crossbody bags that I have. So let's do that now. So my approach for packing this bag is super simple. I have my wallet and um, a few cosmetics, real simple, real cute. Um, I grab this, I fold it nice and flat, and remember what I told you guys, don't ever have anything liquid, no pens, nothing that's not in a sealed, sealed Ziploc. Please respect these bags, I'm begging you. Anyway, so then I take that, pop that in the side, right? Fits right in, no stretching. Look at that. This is what I mean, you know? Skinny as hell, but it goes right in. And then, wallet, right in there gone skinny cute gone you know and then we close we just push that in bring that over 
can't, I never remember which sangle is which. This is the Hermes one. So this goes first. Pull, press, pull, press. So like I said, guys, even completely packed, this bag does get a little bit heavy, but it doesn't look bulky. It doesn't look clunky. It still has this gorgeous, skinny, chic feeling to it. And it definitely looks that way too. Here's the bottom. Don't know if I ever showed you guys this. The stitching is just fabulous, but honestly, you know, that's implied. It's our mess, right? So there it is, a fully packed Kelly. This I could take to the grocery store, to dinner. It's all in here, girl. So guys, the last thing I wanna to touch on, now that the bag is packed, is functionality. I will say, again, it's slightly heavy when it's packed up and the leather is quite heavy as well. So it is quite the um, handful, but luckily I lift, so that's fine. But the only thing I wanna say about functionality, which is kind of a con, is getting into this bag and getting out. When you're standing, for example, to open this bag when you're standing is sort of an art. You have to be able to do it with one hand and it's not as easy as um, it looks to get into this bag with one hand and dip in and stuff. It's, it's not like an open style tote in any <laughs> sense of the word. Um, it takes getting used to, and luckily I'm used to it now, but it definitely is something to keep in mind um, if you're considering a Kelly closure, a sandaled closure. Birkins are a bit different because Birkins can be open and sort of just pushed shut, but with a Kelly, you either secure it like this or you have the sandals underneath and twist the closure, which is not my style. I feel like that damages the leather. I don't know if that's true. That's just my vibe. And I prefer to close it like this, which again is a lot of work. And so that's really the only con I can think of functionality wise. Um, the other thing is that while you're opening and closing this bag with the sandals all the time, what happens is that you eventually get handprints and scratches on the hardware. And I'm such a good parent that maybe you can't see all of the scratches on the hardware, but we have a couple of nicks here and there. I do strictly only clean this bag with a microfiber cloth that I don't use for anything other than Hermes bags. But all the same, you do get hairline scratches that you really cannot avoid if you want to give your bag a real lived experience. Um, I truly don't believe in keeping a perfect bag at the expense of my own use of my bags. And so that is why um, the scratches are just the hill that I'm willing to die on. So it's a con, but it's not um, a deal breaker. You know what I mean? Overall, I'm absolutely thrilled with this bag and the excitement that I felt the first day I opened it is still consistent today whenever I use this bag and really all of my Hermes bags. And it's so crazy that only Hermes bags have this special feeling for me. Whenever I use an Hermes bag, I have this like, oh my God, this is my bag feeling. And I truly feel that with this bag as well as my other Hermes bags. And I'm so, so happy that I added this to my collection. 10 out of 10 would recommend. And the funny thing is, this bag is not a quota bag yet, which is to say that you can actually get it online sometimes. Super expensive still, obviously, but um, in a non-heritage leather, because obviously this was a special order, but in a non-heritage leather, in like a um, Togo Ever Color, you can pick this bag up online. It will sell extremely quickly if it's ever listed. You have to be super fast. But um, yeah, 10 out of 10 would recommend, so ask your essay or refresh your page if you want to score one anyway guys that concludes my unboxing and review of this kelly clutch 25 depeche pochette in barania for board leather and if you stay till the end of this video i have something really crazy to tell you Tomorrow, literally tomorrow, I am flying to Europe, which is actually not a big deal because I do that every year. But this time, I'm flying to Paris for a week. And what's interesting about Paris is this address right here. I am planning on requesting a new bag 
from the Hermes flagship boutique and I need your prayers. I need, I need your prayers. Because if you know anything about the Paris Hermes system, it is hell in there. I mean, it makes the Hunger Games look like a dog walk in Central Park, middle of spring, 25 degrees Celsius outside. I mean, really, it's hell in there, okay? But I'm gonna do what I can, and I'm gonna bring you guys along with me. I don't know how much footage I'll get. Um, it kind of depends on if it works out or not. Comment below what bag I should request. If you can think of a bag that maybe I would like, I don't know. I have some ideas, but you guys let me know what you think. If it all works out, eventually, of course, you can expect a video here about how crazy that experience was. And of course, an iconic, legendary unboxing. But um, in the time leading up to that, feel free to follow my Instagram, where of course I'll be having all the tea leading up to it, and of course the fabulous holiday that is going to be my time in Europe anyway, regardless of what happens. I'll let you guys know how that goes. And I guess that's the end of this video, truly the end of this video. And I wanna thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. I know I haven't uploaded in a little while, but I had guests um, that were staying for a little while, and I just sort of needed some breathing room and actually I'm actually shooting this right now because I wanted to tell you guys about the Paris trip and you know sort of segue into pop arms look great segue into um, going on that trip by showing you guys this bag and maybe I get a new one I don't know I don't know so yeah this was a super long video thank you so much for watching my unboxing slash review slash reveal slash um, extravaganza i don't know um thank you so much for sticking with my sporadic upload cycle i don't know when i'm gonna upload another video maybe it's gonna be a new bag maybe it's gonna be me crying in a bucket about how i didn't get a new bag maybe it's gonna be something else i don't know and i definitely don't know when but thank you so much for watching and see you next time on to the bye